What's up Guiding Bolt viewers? Today we're going to discuss what happens when your PCs get noticed by an evil deity. And I'm not talking some random no-namer. I'm talking about Loth. You know, Spider Queen, Queen of the Demon Web Pits, the Demon Queen of Spiders. Yeah, that Loth. The one who resides in the 66th layer of the Abyss. Chances are she's not just going to appear before the PCs and give them a stern talking to. No, she's way too busy for that. Instead, she's going to have them talk to the Hand. The Hand of Vengeance, that is. Now, for those that don't know, the Hand of Vengeance is the Spider Queen's group of elite assassins. This deadly task force is dispatched from the Demon Web for one purpose and one purpose only. Revenge. So what type of transgression does it take to anger Loth so much that she sends out the A-Team? Well, it could be any number of things. After all, she is chaotic. But some potential hooks are somebody trespassing in the demon web, attempting to steal from or kill her trusted servants, especially priestesses, uh, taking up arms against either her or her children, crop dusting an occupied spider web. You get the idea. Now, currently there are six members of Team V. We have Serona, the female succubus, Famine, the male drow, Vinter, the male drider, Crad, the half-fiend dragoon, Burkert, the fiendish stone giant, and lastly, the deadliest of the bunch, Jagedra Thull, the female vampiric drow half-dragon. Wow. If we were in Game of Thrones, her title would be Jagedra, first of her name, destroyer of everything and everyone, because she's an absolute beast. So we're just going to take a look at uh, each one of them, talk a little bit about their personalities, their battle tactics, and then I'll provide a rough template stat card that I threw together over on D&D Beyond, with the exception of Jagedra, since she is, has the abilities of a drow, dragon, and vampire. The stat card was way too huge. Alright, let's go ahead and dissect. Okay, so as tough as this group sounds, they do have an exploitable weakness, and that is their own evil and chaotic nature. Although they're in a, air quotes, group, they don't work together as cohesively as, let's say, the Avengers. In fact, they rarely help each other with spells, or even work to save each other in combat. Any one of them would abandon, betray, or even hurt the other to save himself or herself, as it never occurs to them that helping an ally betters their own position. When playing these NPCs, remember that they are wicked and depraved. They laugh at their enemies as they inflict wounds, they're ruthless and extreme, typically using their most potent attack first. When they down an opponent, they pause to make sure they're dead with a showy coup de grace, or double tap for you Zombieland fans. Essentially, they have no honor, no sense of fair play, and exploit any weakness to win as quickly and gruesomely as they can. The only time that they accept surrender is when they want to take a prisoner for interrogation and sadistic torture. So if you're a PC, pray for a quick death. Serona is the only true demon in the ranks. She is both arrogant and authoritative in her relations with the rest of the group. When Jagedra is not present, she views herself as the leader. And although the others don't care much for her, they can't dispute her usefulness for getting into position to make sneak attacks. Serona enjoys tempting and corrupting mortals in her spare time, particularly males. She despises mortals and enjoys nothing more than torturing and draining them of all their energy until they lay helpless before her. When her group fights such foes, she attempts to keep one alive and then whisk them away to torture for weeks on end. Eventually she bores and forgets to check in on them, and they die from their wounds or starvation. In combat, Serona goes invisible, using her wings and teleport to get into position to make sneak attacks. Lolth has granted her the ability to drain energy with but a touch of her hand. In battle, she uses her telepathic abilities to communicate and coordinate with other members, as well as to relay information from one team member to another. Fomin is the least cooperative member of the group, typically using his abilities and spells for himself and no one else. While he considers himself desirable and sought after by drow women, it couldn't be further from the truth. He's a cruel and heartless boor that abuses those weaker than him, and he consistently lies to those more powerful. Before wading into combat, Fomin buffs himself with shield and other protection spells. He makes use of the blessing Loth has bestowed upon him to make as many attacks as possible with his poisoned blade. If an opponent is out of reach, he opens fire with poisoned crossbow bolts and magic missiles. 
Being a Drider, the previous members of the Hand of Vengeance protested Vinter's admission to the group, viewing him as a cursed drow that had already failed Loth. However, their views have changed, and he has gained the begrudging respect of the others as they rely on him for healing and support spells. Even though it's out of character, at least a time or two, others have gone out of their way to protect the Drider, so he can maintain concentration and continue to hurl spells at enemies. While primarily a caster, if forced into melee, Vinter is a formidable opponent as he hacks away with a vicious longsword and bite attacks. Crad was raised and nurtured by priestesses of Loth in the demon web, fed magic elixirs for sustenance to ensure he grew larger and stronger than the typical dragoon. The half-demon serves as a central melee combatant, as well as flying mount for both Fahman and Vinter, or Burker to loan. Crad is very straightforward and doesn't hesitate to swoop into battle and attack. Burkert enjoys inflicting pain and spreading misery everywhere he goes, crushing those weaker than him just because he can. He angers easily and flies into rages during combat. While in a rage, he tirelessly wades through enemies, unflinching as they hack and slash away at him. He is so deadly in this state that the Hand of Vengeance has even learned not to make him angry. Jagedra is Loth's favored Avenger. The priestess has served her for hundreds of years. She was born the daughter of a powerful priestess and a black dragon in drow form. The drow was betrayed by her vampiric drow lover named Zakin, who slew her to acquire a powerful magic item. The Spider Queen allowed Jagedra to rise as a vampire herself and join her mistress in the abyss where she has lived ever since. Jagedra rarely associates with the rest of the Hand of Vengeance only working with them when the task is of the utmost importance. Occasionally she carries out missions alone, but most often she serves as a link between Loth and the other members. Loth has granted her a limited wish ability that she can use to restore a fallen hand of vengeance to fight alongside her. Otherwise, she keeps it as a fallback means of complete escape. Alright, I'm sure you've thought of a ton of fun ideas where a group of elite assassins such as these could come into play. Let me know down below if you've used the Hand of Vengeance before, or a similar crew for a different deity. I would love to hear about your adventures. If you found this helpful or entertaining, please click frantically around your screen until you hit either the like or subscribe button, or click down in the comments section and bang your head on the keyboard until it forms a coherent sentence. Either way, thanks for viewing, and keep rolling those dice!